Hey, it's time for Friday Funnies, and our next guest will not disappoint. He's a California native who's been perfecting his stand-up comedy since the tender age of just eight years old. Seriously? In 2020, he released his debut comedy special, Out of Control, that's because he is, and has even been on five USO tours to places like Korea, Japan, Kuwait, just to name a few. Please help me welcome Hannibal Thompson to Friday Funnies. Hey, brother, brother, thanks for joining us. How you doing? Good morning. Glad to be here. All right, so we got to jump right into this because you are huge on Instagram where you perform some very funny skits. So how fun is it for you to connect with fans on your social media and doing these type of things? Uh, I'm very interactive, man, so I love it. You know, uh, I feel like I'm in school just joking and roasting and capping, you know, that's what we call it here on the West Coast. But I just feel like I'm in school just having fun at the lunch table, man. I love I love social media, you know, especially for my comedy career. Oh, definitely. There you go right there. <laughs> and, you know, you also, speaking of comedy career, you spent a lot of your younger days watching comedy greats like Eddie Murphy, Red Fox, Bernie Mac, Richard Pryor, just to name a few. But you probably shouldn't have been watching a lot of that material with their content, the language, you know, but what did you learn from them to help you with your career? Uh, I learned early just to be myself, you know, mm -hmm. like Eddie was young, Eddie Murphy was young when he was doing stand up and just the confidence he had on stage, even though, yeah, you know, he was cursing and stuff when I was watching it, but it was just the presence and the confidence, you know, in the whole type, the whole swagger he had on stage that mm -hmm. like, it just made me just, you know, made me want to do comedy, you know, so it was, it was his whole the confidence thing is what really got me, you know, along with the funny. Mm. But I just wanted to do that. Like, cause I always wanted to make people laugh since I was young. But when I seen I can do it in a professional setting like that, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, and you've been doing it since you were eight years old. Do you remember your first joke or first stand-up that you did or a performance for the family, maybe? Uh, my first time doing stand-up was 12 years ago. But mm. my first time, like, I come from a joking background. My mom and my dad, me and my mom, We've been roasting each other oh, since dang. I was eight, nine years old. You know, we have big roast sessions, me and my mom. I'm, so I come from a line of, you know, funny people, uh -huh. but I'm just the one who took it and made a career of it. And because, you know, it's what I like to do. I didn't really know nothing else, you know, so and, and everything is a joke. And my, to my mom, my dad, my aunties, we laugh at everything. My grandma, we laugh at everything. Everything is a joke. Well, your, everybody thought your mama was being mean to you and she was molding you for the future. Check that out. Well, <laughs> and actually, <laughs> in, in 2020, you released your first comedy special. Congratulations. And you actually mentioned in that special how expensive it is to live in San Francisco. So I got to know, what are some of the things you've actually had to go through and may not wanted to do in order to pay your rent every month? Um... A lot of stuff I can't say on camera. But... <laughs> the clean version. The clean version. But yeah, man, it's 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 been pretty tough here in San Francisco. You know, uh, all my life, um, I grew up um, in the Western Edition. Very nice. Uh, they used to call it back in the days, uh, uh, Black Brooklyn or something. Back in the days, um, I grew up in the Fillmore. Mm. So um, the Black Harlem, excuse me. So it's it was tough, but my parents. I had my parents was two hardworking parents and. Um, they made it work, you know, and I, we were struggling, but I can tell, you know, I, we, I grew up in a project still, but I couldn't tell. We just, you know, we made it work. But as an adult, yeah, man, I had some tough times and I did some stuff uh, to pay rent, but uh, by the grace of God, I'm still here and it worked and it worked out for me, but it's tough here. All right. Well, I'm glad you maintain it. And now the comedy's taking off. Let's get to some of these headlines. All right. Now, your uh, Lakers aren't doing so well. I know you tweet a lot about the, the NBA, but give us your most outrageous hot take on the team. Um, I'm one that thought uh, Russ Westbrook would, would work out, but uh, I was wrong, obviously. But right now, it looked like, man, we just, we don't care. You know, we don't want to play. It looked like uh, the coaches lost the locker room. Mm. Um. Some Laker fans still think we can climb up out of it. You know, I'm one to, uh, I believe, before the All-Star break, I'm like, okay, after the All-Star break, maybe we'll get a little better. But, mm -hmm. man, we're getting worse. And to be honest with you, man, I don't think we're going to make the playoffs. Ooh. 
Don't say that. All right, well, we're going to watch and see either way. And we got to talk about this because it's getting a lot of buzz on Twitter. What food did you eat all the time as a kid that you won't eat now because you've been traumatized? <laughs> Whew. We used to get this beef in a can, a silver can. It was a mm. silver can, and it was a, um, a black cow on the silver can. It mm. was some type of beef in the can we used to get, like, in a box from the church. Mm. And, you know, we used to eat that all the time with, with everything. And I wouldn't eat that for nothing in the world. And also pork chops. People think I'm crazy because I won't eat pork chops no more. And I, I, I just can't eat that type of stuff, man. Mm. Pork is already, you know, enough. But pork chops and... Nah, I no, just can't not do having it. it. <laughs> I don't know if that was really meat in that can. They just called it meat. Just a warning there. All right. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know what? There is a music video out right now of Kanye burying Kim Kardashian's boyfriend Pete Davidson alive. I mean, come on. Is he, Kanye just going too far at this point? What's going on here? Yeah, uh, listen, I love Kanye, but yes, he's going too far. But I want to, what is in the Kardashian cookie? Like, <laughs> Lord have mercy, man. Like, I mean, <laughs> it seems like, man, if you get a Kardashian, you go go crazy at least for a few months. It's like an automatic thing. It's mm -hmm. like in the contract. It's in the contract. Crazy. Go crazy is in the contract because, I mean, he moving next door to her. And like you said, the video of him, uh, 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 the new video of him with Kim, like, that kind of tripped me out. You know, it's, it, right. it was going way too far. I seen the video recently with D.L. Hewley where he was like, people... You know, people thought that was funny and stuff, but that's something, no. like you said, that's stalker vibes. You need to right. take that serious, man. And if anything, he's not going to get Kim back. He's going to get a restraining order. That's what he's going to get. So yes, you better watch exactly. out. Exactly. I don't think he understand that his money and power can't get him out of a restraining order. No, from, you know, no. Creepy stuff like that. I, I don't know what's, like I said, what's in the Kardashian cookie. But listen, I don't want a Kardashian at all. If it's a second, third cousin, I don't want him. Right. Well, I got to get to Bel Air because I love this show. And it's one of the most popular shows out right now. Of course, Will Smith's show. Uh, but Carlton on the show, his character is really hated by fans. So which TV or movie character did you hate or hate the person as if they were the actual character? <laughs> <laughs> well, me being in entertainment, I know this is all entertainment. But right. first of all, I love the, the new Bel Air. Um, the, the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is my favorite TV show of all time. Mm. Will Smith is like an idol. I love Will Smith. But um, Tariq from Power, man. I'm a big, big, big Power fan. Oh, gosh. And I'm still upset that Ghost is gone. You know? Right. So I can't stand Tariq. He always getting somebody in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he, he, you know, he always doing something snakish. But I can't get over him killing and he, Ghost. And he got I his sister killed, just, too. Like... A lot exactly. of people, he got a lot of hate mail when that happened. When he got his sister killed, it was there on the scene. So, yeah, I get it. <laughs> like you said, they're yeah. characters, but still. <laughs> yeah, they're characters, you know. So I don't, I'm not one of the fanatics that take it all the way there. But for me, it would definitely be Tariq from Power. And I love, I love Power. Okay, well, there you go. We'll continue to watch that and Bel Air as well. And if you want to watch this man right here, you can catch Hannibal in Sacramento on March 26th at the Guild Theater. There you go. There's the flyer. Check him out. Hannibal Thompson, thank you so much for joining us for Friday Funnies. We appreciate you. Thank you, boss. You have a good day.